Hi, and welcome back. Some of you might know that in order to publish an app to Apple's App Store or Google's Play Market, you have to upload screenshots of your app. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to take those screenshots directly in Unity as opposed to using an actual device, which might be inconvenient. So let's get right to it. According to Apple's official documentation, to create an app listing for the iPhone on the Apple's App Store, you have to upload two sets of screenshots for a 6.5 and a 5.5 inch iPhone. And for the other screen resolutions, one of these two sets will be scaled. The same goes for the iPad. As for Google's Play Market, at this point they don't have such strict screenshot requirements. So to create a Google Play app listing, we can use the screenshots for the 5.5 inch iPhone. Now in this video, I'm going to be using the same 8-ball pool game that was used as an example in the publishing videos. To take screenshots directly in Unity, let's create a new script. Name it something like Screenshotter. Open it. And delete the start callback since we're not going to be using it. Now to have Unity take screenshots in the update, we're going to call a method of the screen capture class. The name of the method is capture screenshot. That takes a string as a parameter. The string parameter represents the file path for the screenshot. Of course, you can save your screenshots anywhere on your computer, but I'm going to save mine on the desktop just to be able to access them quickly. On a Mac, the file path to the desktop folder is forward slash users slash your username slash desktop. On Windows, it's usually C colon backslash users backslash your username backslash desktop. Next, we need to add the file name for the screenshot itself, which can be anything, for example, just screenshot. However, if you take several screenshots, then the most recent one will always overwrite the previous one, since at this point we're using the same file name for all screenshots. To solve this problem, we're going to add a number at the end of the file name. And we're going to increase the number every time we take a screenshot to make sure all of the file names are unique. We should also add a file extension to the file name, and we can go for, say, .png. Now, needless to say, to make it work, we need to declare the variable count. All right, at this point, since we're calling the capture screenshot method in the update, Unity is going to take a screenshot every frame, which is not what we want. We want to be able to take screenshots at will. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this code on keyboard key press. Let's say when we press the space key on the keyboard. And this is pretty much it for the code part. Now let's switch back to Unity. Add an empty game object to the scene and attach to it the newly created script. Next, before we run the game, we need to set the screen resolution, which for me is currently set to Full HD or 1920 by 1080. For a 5.5 inch iPhone, screen resolution for the landscape orientation must be 2208 by 1242 pixels. And now we can run the game and take screenshots by pressing the space key on the keyboard at any point during the play session. Please note, however, that every time you enter play mode in Unity, the variable count in the screenshotter script gets reset to zero, meaning if there are screenshots from the previous play session that you want to keep, make sure you either rename them or move them to a different folder. All right, next, the 6.5 inch screenshots. You can take the same approach for 6.5 inch screenshots. However, in case you apply some safe area adjustments to the UI and you want those adjustments to be reflected in the screenshots, then instead of taking screenshots using the game view, as we did for the 5.5 inch ones, you should use device simulator that you can access by going window, general, device simulator. If you don't have it, then you need to install the device simulator package, which you can do by going window, package manager and looking up the package by using this search bar. And this is the package that we're interested in. If it doesn't appear on the list, it's probably because it's still in preview or simply put in beta, and you do not have preview packages enabled. To enable preview packages, you open settings by pressing this cogwheel button and choosing advanced project settings. And here, make sure you have this enable preview packages box checked. And if you do that, you should be able to download and install the device simulator package. 
and when you're done installing it, open it. I'm going to dock it right next to the game panel. So if you're not familiar with Device Simulator, it basically does exactly what its name suggests. It simulates, although only partially, the actual devices, and I'm going to explain why we're using it for taking screenshots in just a bit. So the 6.5 inch screenshots are basically meant for the Pro Max iPhone models. So let's set the current device to, say, iPhone 12 Pro Max. And rotate it into the landscape orientation using these rotate buttons. So the main reason why it's not a good idea to take 6.5 inch screenshots the same way we took the 5.5 inch screenshots is the safe area of the 6.5 inch iPhones that you can see if you press this safe area button. So because of this notch and rounded corners, to make sure our screenshots accurately reflect the way the game is going to be displayed on an actual device, we should use Device Simulator. But before that, of course, we need to make sure our game gets properly adjusted to the actual device's safe area. And due to the current limitations of Device Simulator, we need to make sure the game gets properly adjusted to the safe area from the very start. If you've been following our 8-Ball Pool Game video course, where we work on the project that you can currently see on the screen, then you should have this safe area script. And you need to make sure that in the safe area script, you call this adjust safe area method in the awake. Now, if your safe area related code looks different, it's not a big deal. Just make sure all safe area adjustments get applied in the awake. So if we now run the game, our UI will get adjusted to the safe area of the screen, and if we take screenshots here in Device Simulator, they will reflect the safe area adjustments. And this is pretty much it. All right, so in this video, we'll learn how to take screenshots for publishing directly in Unity without building the project to actual devices. Now, if you're interested to learn more about the process of publishing a Unity game to Apple's App Store or Google's Play Market, you might want to check out our videos related to the topic. The links are in the video description. If you're curious about the 8-Ball Pool game that was used as an example in this video, you can check it out on the stores. The links are also in the video description. And if you're interested to learn how to make games in Unity in general and how to make that 8-Ball Pool game in particular, Stay tuned for the comprehensive game making video series that we're currently working on. Anyways, this is it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.